but what was Bell's inequality and what implications did it have for quantum non-locality? Good. So Bell says, suppose I have a causally, a relativistically local theory. That's well-defined. It doesn't even have to be quantum. You know, it doesn't have, have anything to do with quantum mechanics, whatever theory you like, but it does have this constraint. What it, it, intuitively, I separate Alice and Bob, whatever happens in Alice's lab can't have any direct effect on what happens in Bob's lab if I put them far enough apart. And if I do the experiments at su in such a way that even light couldn't get from one to the other to have an effect. So that's a good constraint. And he says, well, in that case, there's just certain things that couldn't happen. Um, there are certain, in particular, correlations between the outcomes that Alice sees and the outcome that Bob sees that could not be predicted and therefore could not be explained by any local theory. Um, and there are there, e, e, I mean, there, there's the mathematics of showing this in detail, which isn't that hard. Maybe there's an analogy I can give, which is not exact, because this is not exactly what's going on, but just to give people the sense of, you say, well, what do you mean it's impossible? I mean, suppose, suppose again, I've got these, these Legos. Okay, I've got, suppose I, I say, all right, there are three Legos, um, and I'm going to have them hidden. And you're allowed, however you want, to indicate any two that you're going to look at, okay? And it's a completely unconstrained choice, right? You can decide which two you indicate however you like. But here's an interesting fact. And there, there are only two colors that ever show up. There's this light green and this dark green. But here's an interesting fact. All the time, whenever you indicate any two, whichever two they are, and I reveal them, they'll be of opposite colors. Okay? And you stop them and you say, wait, how, how can that be? I mean, you, you, th there's a trick because it, if they're all three the same color underneath here, then whichever two I pick will be the same color. And if two are the same and the other's different, still, I could pick the two that are the same. How could it be that every time they're different, right? And then I, you know, I do it. Well, that didn't work. Okay, I, I do it. This <laughs> way. I, oh, look, they're different. But, you know, you do yeah. this over and over again and you keep picking and every time, and you're going to say, wait, there's some sleight of hand going on here, right? Somehow, you can't just be revealing to me the colors they already have. You can't prearrange them to have colors in such a way that every pair, there are only two colors, but every pair have a different color. It can't be done. So there must be some way in which your choice of which two to look at, and this is a case where, for whatever reason, you can never look at the third one, your choice of which two to look at is actually going to have an effect on which colors they are. So maybe I'm a magician, and after you've chosen, I'm, you know, I'm good at sleight of hand, and I can switch these things around. But I have to do that. I can't just literally put them under my hands in a way that that will always work. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing, I mean, it's not exactly that, but that gives you a flavor for the kind of way you could say, in that case, I say, look, if, 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 your, if your choice of which two to look at has no effect at all on the colors themselves, then that's a behavior you just can't get. Bell's is like that. Bell says, if, if Alice's choice of what experiment to do has no influence at all on what happens in Bob's lab, and Bob's choice of what experiment to do has no influence at all on Alice's lab, then there are constraints on, on the kinds of correlations they could see. Um, so that arises for any causally local theory. Now, the, the two interesting facts are, first of all, that quantum theory predicts violations of those constraints. And then, again, the important thing is that you go into the lab and you check, and they are violated. So that tells you no locally causal theory can work. So that tells you there's something kind of causal influence that's faster than light. Yeah. That's the short story. Now, you know, it, it's not that hard to give you an exact, the, 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 the story here is when Bell does his original work, he's looking at pairs of particles in these special so-called entangled states. And he gives you an argument in this form. Uh, later on, Greenberger, Horn, and Zeilinger come up with a slightly different example that involves three particles. And I've got Alice and Bob and Charlie all in their labs. And, and then you can prove in just the same way that I just did, 
you can't prearrange. I'm going to create a triple of particles, send one to Alice, one to Bob, one to Charlie. You can't prearrange them to have properties that are merely revealed by these experiments in a way that would give you the right statistics. Can't be done. That's the, you know, that's what he proved. And you can't get around it. And you can't get around it by saying, oh, I don't want to be a realist. I say, well, who cares? I don't care whether you're a realist or not, right? This is just a mathematical, you know, this really is a mathematical proof that a certain kind of thing can't be done. Thank you.